My name's Chip Michaels. I run the uh, like electro, what we call electronics technology here on the campus. We're at Hawaii CC, that's the Hawaii Community College in Hilo. And my program is called ETRO or electronics technology. You will see it listed as ETRO if you go pull up any of the courses. Um, so kind of some key points to our, our program here. Uh, are this one it's a two-year program it's it's an associate's degree we are work currently working with Maui College to a four-year bachelor degree uh, as well so basically what that means is that you would complete our program and then you'd start off as a junior for Maui College and you'd wind up with a bachelor's degree at the end of four years so that's another route if you're interested in doing that but our program in general has four key points. And I kind of jotted some notes down to try to not drone you guys to death, uh, but try to be somewhat efficient. And uh, the first point is electric princi electronic principles. That is when your first year, first semester kind of thing. And what we do there is we actually focus on things like Ohm's law, uh, resistors, capacitors, inductors, how they work together. And if you like hands-on kind of work, oh my, you're gonna love this. We are very heavy into hands-on. You will be building all sorts of circuits, analog and digital. And your first semester will be doing basic uh, type circuits, plus you'll be doing digital. The digital we do uh, binary coded decimal converters. Uh, we do shift registers. We do all your basic logic gate constructions. And as well as you're gonna learn how to build these gates using transistors as well. The second uh, semester, we do more advanced stuff with motor controllers. You'll actually build your own motor controller. And uh, uh, that's, that's always pretty fun. Um, we also spend four semesters in networking. So we use Cisco network systems and we have, and we'll show you, I'll take you back in the lab and we'll show you some of the stuff we have. But uh, four semesters of Cisco, and you can get your certification here on the campus. You can do all your testing here too. So it's very handy for doing that. <clears throat> your second semester, we're gonna spend most of your time working on telecommunications and processing controls kind of items. So in telecom, we're gonna be working on things like, you know, different types of modulation and how they're applied. You're going to learn how to construct and calculate building antennas. You'll learn about wave propagation, um, all sorts of different schemes along those lines. Um, and then the processing controls, we use Siemens S7 software. Now, Siemens is a probably the number one controller distri distri distribution in the world. Um, they are second in the, e in the U.S., and that is tightening up. Seems to put a lot of effort into being number one, mainly because they're actually coming to the universities and colleges like ours, and they're helping us out. So you will in fact build your own panels, and we're gonna give you a little walk around and show you just what it's like to go to school here. Um, this is, uh, I think you'll have uh, a good, sense of what you do here after you just see a couple of few things. First thing I'm going to show you is what you're, you know, you come to school, you're used to sitting in a plain old desk. Here your desk is going to look more like this. So what you're looking at here is we have a function generator and an oscilloscope, power supplies, and then you also have a network rack. So all through the, the whole area, you'll see all these network racks, different different uh, um, places, desks. So this is the kind of the average kind of thing that you're coming to school for. You will be building stuff here. Now, in the fabrication, when we get to the PLCs and stuff, this is kind of what you're gonna be looking at. You're gonna be building this panel. Everybody gets a blank panel. You will learn how to use the tools to create the holes, learn how to lay it out, learn how to wire it and how to do metal treatments to the metal to prevent corrosion and other type of problems. Um, so we cover a lot of subject matter uh, in, the, in the program. 
and I come from industry. So I've been in industry for 30 years. So I've worked defense industry, utility industry. I've worked up on the summit. So I've got a little bit of background in doing all sorts of fun stuff. Um, let's go for a walk into the lab. The lab is kind of cool. Now, our, what I just showed you is kind of a lab, but it's mostly for our regular instruction. <clears throat> but when we go do the big projects, the fun. Oh, I just do that. Yeah. Here, cover that up. See that little corner there? That's that's Tiberius. Tiberius is our mining robot that we're building for this year's competition. Anyway, so in here, this is our main lab. It's pretty big. We have six racks of Cisco equipment, and each of the equipment, you are looking at it kind of like this. So you're gonna be working on this stuff. You're gonna be programming it. You're gonna be building the cables that interconnect these, these units. You'll be putting them up through the cable trays. You learn all the industrial techniques to do that. Now the cool part is Cisco networking is very, how would you say, desirable throughout the world. Skill sets you're gonna learn here aren't just for the Big Island or Hawaii. They're for anywhere. If you wanna to go to the mainland, make a bunch of money, you can do it here. All these, everything you learn here will be applicable. Now, the next thing I'm showing you is our fabrication. There we go. Hey, that's Spock. That's another one of our mining robots that competed at NASA in 2017. So we have a little break there. We, <clears throat> we can tell we're kind of busy. We got all sorts of stuff all over. But yeah, we're building stuff here. So the fabrication room we use for building our robots. Um, we compete. Recently, we've, we've really kind of pushed hard now for working at NASA. Um, it's really a lot of fun to go do those trips. You get a tour of the, the facility at uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And the cool part is you get to go see rockets and we get to go to the R&D labs. Man, no, you want to talk about fun. So they call it the Swamp Works. Um, <clears throat> obviously Florida swamp yeah so at any rate it's a lot of fun uh, we all have a good time there's plenty of beaches you know so as a as a summer event it's good fun the cool part is everything you learn here you can apply it to that robot so you'll learn fabrication the electronics and all these things pass into industry as far as <laughs> you don't do just one little thing you can do multiple things. So the whole curriculum here is to make you a, almost kind of a jack of all trades. So when you go to a company, they can mold you into what they need. You'll have enough skill sets that you'll be desirable. And just, you know, say, well, geez, where, where do you get jobs here in Hawaii? That's my number one question. And here are some list of uh, employers that we currently work with directly. And that's IRTF, that's uh, Observatory, East Asian Observatory, Gemini Observatory, the Department of Water Supply, uh, Helco, Cytel, that's a communications company, Pacific Wireless, that's another communications company, the FAA, in fact, one of my students just got hired on to the FAA, uh, Pisces, Subaru, uh, oh, new uh, power generation. So, and that's just scratching the surface. I mean, we, there are lots of jobs here that are kind of hidden. And the cool part is, is we really make a, uh, an effort to try to keep my students uh, in the loop on when things open up. Because if you've noticed, you've never seen any of these jobs in the newspaper. And it's all local. It's, it's the coconut wireless. So, when I hear of things coming up, I try to put emails out to all my students who are looking for work and uh, see if we can't fit the student to, to the employer. So there's really good opportunities here, both uh, locally and uh, if you want to do it on the mainland. Uh, most of our guys wind up going to the mainland uh, because they want to make a lot of money. Uh, currently, if you can be a uh, process and controls technician, uh, you can make in the neighborhood of 90000 a year to start. 
So, uh, and that's what we teach. That's a, that's a big chunk of what we teach. So, um, if you're looking for those kind of skill sets, you know, we're, we're teaching them. And just as a side note, this COVID thing, the only students that I have that aren't working are those who work for the observatories. Everybody else in the com communications industries, water industry, any of those, they're all working because they're essential to the, to the way uh, we live t today. So there's a lot of opportunity to be had here. Um, and I think we have, a, in general, a pretty good program. Our employers are pretty pleased with what we're doing. And uh, most of my students seem to really enjoy uh, the two years. So um, I don't know. I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, do we have any questions popping up? All right. Yeah, we do. <clears throat> uh, some of the questions that are coming through are, uh, what is the starting salary for an entry level position? Uh, Good I question. Most of my guys who are getting jobs are starting 25 to 30 an hour. My kid has a BS degree in biology. He's making 15 an hour. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, in terms of robotics and, uh, there, you know, there's lots of high schools across the state that are really into that whole robotics thing. Um, and we know that math is a big uh, component of robotics. Uh, what type of math do you need to enter into That's this lift good question. And that is a very frequently asked question. Everybody's terrorized to the math. Um, you're at least looking at someone who didn't do very well in math in high school. Um, I actually got better at math in college, and that was thankfully to a, to a uh, college professor who really kind of, you know, helped me out on how to look at math and how to really attack math. And I use the same uh, philosophy, and my big deal is, is if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you're good. I will teach you all the cheats, and before you know it, you'll be doing some pretty high-end math and you won't be realizing just what you're doing. Uh, and a lot of it that has to be is how it's presented and how you learn. And I'm telling you, don't be afraid of the math. We'll take care of that for you. My biggest concern is, do you have the, the willingness to work at it? Uh, do you really want to do this? And for me, when I was young in learning, uh, I wasn't very good at math, but I really wanted to learn electronics. And... Um, so my perseverance actually, you know, really pushed me through um, to learning this stuff. And, and I'll tell you, it paid off because my first job was working in an R&D lab at Hughes Aircraft, working on a missile system that is still in use today. So, uh, in fact, it's called the AIM-120. You'll see them on all the fighter jets. Uh, and that's still in use. So, you know, when it comes to geez, do I, I don't know if I can hack this. The question is, you can hack it. I'm here for you. It's, do you really want to do it? You really want to learn it? If you really want to learn it, you'll, you'll do well, guaranteed. But you just have to, you know, nose to the grindstone. And, and to be quite honest, everybody tells me, you know, the program's probably one of the tougher programs, but it's really fun. And I'm like, really? And the students are like, yeah. And uh, they all enjoy it. Uh, and, uh, and I do work you guys hard and you learn a lot of stuff in a very short period of time. And realistically, you're worth learning about three years worth of material in two. So, um, we really push hard on, uh, on the opportunities for you to learn. So, uh, I, and, and again, I'm one of these guys who I'm here all the time. So if you need help with anything, I'm here. In fact, usually most of the guys hang out in the room. And everybody kind of helps each other along. And uh, so you wind up being kind of a little bit more of a close knit family here than, than like a, a regular math class or something like that. So. All right. <laughs> well, everybody, we want to, well, we want you guys who are just logging in, please take the time to ask some questions. We're here again with uh, Professor Chip Michaels from Hawaii Community <laughs> College. Uh, Rocking the house about electronics, about electronic technology and this super duper program that he has going on. A um, couple of questions that are coming in. Uh, you know, we, I, I grew up uh, working on MS DOS and and trying to code that way. 
and have kind of uh, kind of progressed into doing some kind of HTML coding and that kind of stuff. Uh, tell us, do you need to know how to code uh, to enter? No. Oh. So coding is more of a computer science type thing. What we do is uh, ladder logic and, um, and then a little bit of C++. So, oh, and that's a really good idea. Let's bring that up. Where would we use this kind of stuff? Where would you go with that coding and stuff? You know, with the ladder logic, I'm gonna flip this here. This is a, uh, let's see, where are you? Come on. Not playing nice with me here. There we go. Okay. So this is your final project, or your final exam, I should say. We'll zoom in on this a little bit closer here. And we'll talk about this a little bit. This is the Siemens PLC. And this is where you'll apply your ladder logic, your C++ programming, your fabrication. And this is the HMI, our human machine interface. And here we have a valve that you control with the outputs. Here's a flow meter. And then there's a pressure meter underneath this vessel. So what we do is you actually learn how to create PID loops, which is a a proportional, integral, and differential uh, error uh, loop. And we use these kind of ideas in manufacturing, uh, in uh, waste wa or wastewater, fresh water, that kind of stuff for doing processes. Uh, so as far as the coding, as you would call, or programming, uh, you'll learn ladder logic, and it is Siemens based. Now, Siemens is a little different than Allen Bradley, which is a little different than Mitsubishi or any of those guys, but the premise is pretty much the same. So, you, if you learn one language, it's pretty easy to propagate into another language. Uh, what you wind up doing is you wind up learning the uh, proprietary um, characteristics of each design. So, the killer part of this is, is that you can't learn this stuff in the university. You can only learn it from someone who's in industry. And the reason is because Siemens don't make books about this. And so when uh, you take this program, uh, one of the big things I'll always tell you, take really good notes because you won't find it otherwise. And uh, you might be able to pick up a few things on YouTube because some guys are, will show projects and whatnot on there. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, I learned from the Siemens folks and then I teach it, and then you learn from me, and you show someone else, you know. I can't tell you how many people I've taught already how to use it, and, and it's a lot of fun. It's very creative, and um, uh, certainly your, your imagination is the limits on the uses of this stuff. So Chip, we see that a lot of the things that you presented today are really hands-on for students. They're, they're in the laboratory, they're applying what you're teaching them. Um, are classes going to be going online in this new COVID uh, world that we live in? Oh, <laughs> no way. No, actually, um, the way our desks are set up, we have plenty of social distancing. So we don't even need to practice. It's already, we've done well already. At it. So <clears throat> we have two students per desk. And I'll try to back off and show them how that kind of works. I was really good at making it put my finger in front of the camera here. So this is a full desk. So that is about what how long is that? That's, that's quite a way. That's a good 12 feet long. So each student is on an end, and then the network rack is in the middle. And then you just share the network rack. So We've got lots of distance to do. And you really kind of need it because when you start building your projects on the on the breadboards, I got one of those guys laying around here. There we are. Uh, these kind of guys. And what you do is you build your projects on this. And you have two boards. And a lot of times you'll need all that space just to lay out the layers. Because <laughs> we do have some 
real, how would you say, challenging projects, uh, you will you will not go through this program and not be challenged. I can guarantee you that. So it is very much hands on. Um, in fact, I can't think. I can't really think of any course we do that we we're not doing something with our hands. Um, you're either building circuits or you're doing some kind of programming, which utilizes the laptop, and you get instant results with your with your work too. So the feedback is right there, uh, whether you're doing the lab or whether you're working on on the laptops. So. We know that you presented uh, about the different organizations and corporations that you're partnering with. Uh, there's a question about, are, are there any internships opportunities uh, oh, yeah. while you're in the program? Absolutely. In fact, one of my guys is working with, for Subaru right now. Um, uh, usually we wind up uh, getting two to three of our students working up on the summit on average. Um, depending upon where your strengths are, you could wind up in California or, uh, you know, a lot, usually it's either California or here is where we want, we want up. But uh, yeah, the students, the internships, uh, we go, we work with Akamai and they get a lot of folks. And um, we also have um, uh, internships that you can apply for, for NASA. Um, they like, like that as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of NASA and SpaceX, so yes, you will have to put up with some, watching some launches and, and the blah blah stuff, you know. But uh, it's all good fun. Um, in fact, SpaceX actually does use some of the Siemens controllers, so the software you learn will be, you know, very current for industry. Okay, we got about two minutes left, uh, guys. Any last questions out there for Professor Chip Michaels? Hawaii Community College, feel free to write in the chat right now. And yeah, we, we have questions about um, who can they contact if they want more information? Karen Cronwell, or, uh, or even myself. Um, if you go to the, to the Hawaii Community College website, you can find us in the staff directory. Or if you just look under the electronics program, in fact, I would encourage you to do that. We have a really cool video showing the, the new facilities here. Um, everything I showed you today in the building, these are our new digs. And uh, uh, it's really nice. We have a lot of room. Uh, you guys, we have enough equipment to where you guys can even check out equipment to work on your own projects if you want. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I would encourage you to do that. Um, certainly, I mean, if you go to my my site there on there, you'll find you'll find my uh, phone number. Uh, it's really important that we have good quality technicians go out there. All right, guys, we're getting to the last couple minutes of our presentation. Any last questions, thoughts, Professor Michaels? Well, I hope to see some folks out there in our in our program, and I think you will find that uh, um, you're going to get your money's worth, guaranteed. All right. Well, thank you today. Thank you, Gus, for being our DJ for the session, and thank you, Professor, for sharing the facilities and your time and your knowledge. If anyone's wondering, twenty-five to thirty dollars an hour is about fifty to sixty-two dollars a year annually for a forty our work week. Thank you very much, Professor, and thank you for everyone else for joining us today. All right, thanks. Aloha, everyone. Aloha.